Action. Okay, so we have gone through, I think we got through Peck Minor on the last video. So now we're gonna go to Serratus Anterior, and then we're gonna move to the back of the upper back and talk about the rotator cuff and Terry's Major. So that's what this video will be covering. Serratus Anterior looks like a fan, and it comes off of the first um, eight to nine ribs, and then inserts on the anterior side of the scapula. So to get to this one, you're gonna have to have your patient raise their arm. Now, eight through ninth rib, is right about to here, okay? So you wanna make sure you're above that, and really the closer you are to the armpit, not in the armpit, you don't wanna tickle your patient, um, <laughs> but that way you know you're on it. If you feel here, you actually feel a rib, go right above it, right below it, because these muscles, you'll feel better between the ribs than right on it, okay? And serratus is in charge of protracting the scapula. I'm gonna hold back here, right. or bringing the scapula around the ribs. Okay, so if you ask your patient to punch towards the ceiling, okay, keep your elbow straight and just lift like that. Oh. Okay, go down and do it again. And I can feel that muscle contract right here. If I feel like I need a stronger, that's my dog. <laughs> if I need a stronger contraction, what I would do is give resistance and punch up into my hand, excellent. And then I can feel a little bit stronger contraction. Okay, so that's serratus anterior. If you will roll over on your tummy, please. Excellent, there she and is. for this, um, you can keep the pillow, but put your arms down at your side, please. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna get my little scapula model here. holes were. Okay, um, so this is what we're looking at here. Okay, this is the humerus. The clavicle should be wrapping around, but this is just about um, what we're looking at. To find Terry's major, if you find the inferior border of the scapula and just go about two fingers out um, and maybe slightly up, maybe just one finger up from the inferior border, you should be on Terry's major. I'm gonna find my patient's inferior angle, okay? Patient, can you put your hand behind your back for me? And just relax, see it popped right up for us, right there. <laughs> it's hard to see on the camera, I'm sure, but it popped up. If I go two fingers out and one up, okay? And I'm gonna put my patient's arm down at their side, okay? Um, Terry's major is an internal rotator or a medial rotator, okay? So medial rotation is like putting your hand behind your back, okay? So patient, I'll tell you what, can you scoot towards me just like a couple inches? Okay. Yeah. Scoot, scoot. Okay, there you go. That way her arm is just going to be supported. I have not moved my hand, so I'm still on Terry's major. I'm just going to ask her to do that with her arm. Can you push back like that? Excellent. Okay. Okay. Do that one more time for me. Push. And you see all this tighten up? Relax for me. And again, did you see all that? That's awesome. She's an excellent Terry's major. Okay. Now, these are kind of fun because for Terry's minor, we're just going to go right above that. Okay. So, inferior angle, two fingers out, one up. That was Terry's major. Go two more fingers up and we're shooting out towards the head of the humerus because these go at an angle. So two more fingers up. I should be on Terry's minor. Let's find out. Terry's minor is an external rotator. Okay, so relax and bring your hand up like that again. And I feel that so well. Um, and how do I know I'm not on Terry's major? Because Terry's major is not helping with this action at all. So I have to be on minor. It's nice. I had a student once who was having trouble remembering uh, which muscle did what. So they came up with, I'm a major in the military and this is how we stand at attention. And then, don't arrest me, I'm a minor. So major is internal rotation. 
and minor is external rotation. I didn't think of it. They thought of it. That's smart. <laughs> Helps it stick. Okay, next one on your list is gonna be infraspinatus. This entire muscle is infraspinatus. So if you can find the spine of the scapula, anywhere below that, still on the scapula, is infraspinatus. So it's a pretty big guy, okay? If you're having trouble finding the spine, find the inferior angle and go up two, three, four fingers, okay? And you're gonna be right here in this belly. Infraspinatus, also an external rotator. So if you'll put your hand behind your back. No, just on the table, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's the spine right here. I can be anywhere in this area, so I'm just gonna be right there because I can be. Also an external rotator, hand here, and bring the back of your hand up towards the ceiling. Kaboom. Very, very nice. Okay, so, so far you can relax. Two of our rotator cuff muscles have been teres minor and infraspinatus, okay? Uh, rotator cuff muscles are your sits muscle, S, I, T, and S. So we've done the I and the T, now we have two S's to do, okay? Can you sit up for me? Okay, this is my patient's shoulder, and this is the muscle we wanna get next, which is supraspinatus. It's right above the spine of the scapula, okay? Now there's lots of stuff in the way. There's lots of bone here, okay? But if we find the spine of the scapula, which is right here, again, it ends at the acromion process. So you could always follow the acromion process back onto the spine. Just come right above that, okay? The closer you get to your patient's neck, the more stuff you have in the way, the more you're gonna be on upper trap maybe even levator scapulae. So if you stay lateral, you're, you're gonna be more just on supraspinatus. Supraspinatus is in charge of the first 30 degrees of abduction, okay? So come out and meet my hand with your arm right there, hold it there, and I can push in, and again, I feel this muscle tightening up very nicely, okay? That is its job. The very last one is subscapularis. A subscapularis is on the front side, the anterior side of the shoulder blade. So how in the world are we gonna get to that, you might ask? We have a couple of different ways we can do it, okay? The first one is very tickly. I'm sorry. <laughs> she says she doesn't want to do that. Um, so I will do the non-tickly way. Uh, can you lay on your side? Either side does not matter. You knew my question. Yes. Wait, um, do I need this hand? No. Okay. Um, camera, can you go to her backside, please? I can indeed. I could have just turned around. No, you're fine. No, it's easier for me to move. Okay. So what I need to do is I'm going to put your arm right here. And we're going to bend it. Good. Okay. I just need you to relax this arm for me, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to push right on her shoulder, right on her humerus, head of her humerus. I'm going to push it backward. Relax. I'm not going to hurt you. It does not hurt at all. Okay, I'm going to push that back and I'm going to get my fingers right at the medial border and I'm going to come up under and you can see I'm now between her ribs and her scapula and the job of subscapularis is internal rotation. So with her arm positioned as it is, I can just ask her, press your hand into your stomach really hard and she pops me right out because that muscle contracted and brought the scapula down and it pushed me out, okay? When that muscle contracted, it took up all the room, okay? So that is one way to do it. Now, if your patient has tons and tons and tons of muscle up here or can't relax, you may not be able to get your hands up in there, okay? Um, so I'm gonna show you another way to do it and I'm not gonna tickle you. Okay. Okay, can you stand up for me? So what I would have done that, oh, she has a burn on her hand. So, <laughs> so what I want you to do is put, this hand doesn't hurt, right? This one down and just hang this arm. Wait, I, I'm sorry, I can see what you're Just doing. hang your arm down. Okay, come over here. I'm not gonna actually touch you, okay? Okay, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Okay, what I'm gonna do, this right here, 
is her scapula. So I need to get on the underneath side of her scapula. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get right in the armpit. I'm not gonna touch you. She really hates this, okay? But that's where you're gonna get. And then you would ask your patient to, look at my hand, go in and out, okay? Look how she's doing it with her shoulder, okay? Stop for a second and just turn your hand. Okay, this is supination and pronation. Nothing's happening up here, okay? So when you tell your patient to turn their hand up and down, you gotta make sure it's coming from the shoulder. If it's not coming from the shoulder, you will not feel this, okay? What you're gonna feel is every time they turn their hand in, you're gonna feel this hardening. And then when they turn their hand the other way, it goes away. It's, it's almost like a heartbeat. It'll go tighten and relax and tighten and relax. Um, this is one I'm sure on camera, it's a little bit hard to see. Um, but if you get your finger right up in your patient's armpit and press up against the underside of the scapula, it's really obvious. I tell people, if you stop, if you finish this one and you don't have either deodorant or a little bit of sweat on your fingers, you probably weren't in the right place. Um, so this is, you can stand up. Um, patients don't usually like this one too much, uh, which is why I like doing it on the table and getting on the underneath side. Okay, um, so that was our last S. That was our last rotator cuff muscle. And that's it for this video. Thank you.